All right, guys, welcome to another beer review. And uh, I've got a day off tomorrow, so I'm going to hit up some beers. And uh, that sounds so fucking posy. Um, yeah, it's been a bit of a annoying day today, so uh, I've got an Imperial Stout on the go. Uh, but fear not, I've got a pizza on its way. I'll probably get interrupted, uh, making this video pointless. But uh, that's just, that's the clueless drink away. Uh, ladies and gentlemen. So today we're going back over to Northern Monk and part of their Patrons Project series. Uh, my favourite sort of beer uh, series. Just f fantastic stuff. Northern Monk have just, they've always been a great brewery, but they've come on leaps and bounds with some of the monstrous releases they've had. So yeah, this is Northern Monk's Project 1402, which is a cacao, tonka bean and sour cherry imperial stout, 10% ABV and uh, brewed in collaboration with Amundsen and uh, I think with music by Monochromicon, uh, Namaster and Sir Impaler. Uh, then we've also got artwork I believe from Steve Miles. Of course I'll know the information once I open up the, uh, the label. Speaking of which, this could be one of my favourite pieces of artwork of the year. Fantastic stuff, look at that, absolutely mental. So, uh, yeah, the artist is uh, Steve Miles. So I'll give you a little bit of uh, reading. Uh, Amundsen Brewery is an Oslo-based brewery focused on producing craft beers of the highest quality for the non-conformists out there. Their motto is created by craftsmen as they see themselves as modern-day craftsmen, handcrafting and producing ales, logs and sours. At Amundsen, they do not believe in but strive to innovate, uh, but... They do not only believe in, I say, be creative, create world-class beers from only the finest ingredients they get their hands on. Their international team packs decades of combined experience and stand by every single product that leaves their doors. As Oslo's target brewery, the largest brewery, can't read, and one of Norway's fastest growing breweries, they've been following an organic growth from their starting days in the 5 hectolitre brew pub in 2011. Shortly after building their first production facility in 2013 with a modest 10 hectolitre system. With growing demand and space becoming uh, tight, their favour expanded their brand new fringed and 50,000 M242 hexliter brew pond in 2016. Thanks for giving me an essay, by the way, Northern Monk. Love you, Riley. And uh, yeah, they hope to stay and grow for many more years to come. Quality, consistency, innovation and passion is what drives Peter to make wonderful beer reviews. Uh, no, it's what drives them from day to day. So Steve Miles with... Uh, some more examples of his fantastic work. I'd love some t-shirts with that sort of artwork on. I'm going to have to check out his uh, sick merch. So Steve Miles is a freelance illustrator born and bred in Leeds. He's been drawing gig poster slash band merch design, hey hey, since he started running the small music venue uh, Royal Park Cellars back in 2006. He's been involved in the DIY music scene in Leeds since he was 15 and still plays drums in the band's Cattle cattle.bandcamp.com and groke groke.bandcamp.com as well as being one of the founding members of the local practice slash music collective chunk gonna have to look into these bands he runs the clothing company pyroclima there we go get some merch with his girlfriend which specializes in putting dark designs on ethical garments steve mainly works digitally but also has the odd large format piece when he gets the chance uh, special shout out to the Temple of Boom, the Wharf Chambers and Brundo Social Club for giving him something to do away from his computer. If you'd like to see more of his work, then check out www.steve-miles.com. smiles underscore 85 is the Instagram. All links will be down below. Uh, Patrons Project 14 is all about pairing our favourite local bands with our favourite illustrators with our favourite beer styles. The projects are born of desire to bring more to drinking experience. Let us guide you on a sonic drinking adventure. The music ranges from heavy metal to brass bands, all hailing from the north, which I think follows in line with uh, the obelisk they did with the brass band. I can't remember the name. But uh, yeah, so scanning this Spotify search bar to go straight to the track, and that's the track from uh, Monster. So I don't know if that'll, that'd work. I'm not sure, but you can look them up on uh, uh, Spotify. So, take a breath and read the last of this. So, months and stout notes from the brewer. After hanging out at Dark City last year, we simply had to make a beer with our good friends at Munston. We were all blown away by their big, flavourful beers, and there were many of the staff's beers at the festival. With massive flavour packed into the beer, 
it's hard not to be completely taken with their imperial stouts. We knew straight away that this was the style of beer we were out to make. Using nine different malts, three different F3 additions and two different sugars, we wanted to make a beer with massive layers of flavour and depth that couldn't be ignored using the adjuncts to intensify the flavours within rather than mask them. Additions of cherry, muscovado, cacao, tonka bean help boost the natural dark malt flavours and complete this big beast of a beer. So uh, yeah, fantastic sounding stuff um, and as I said, beautiful, beautiful artwork. Lovely, lovely stuff indeed. I don't think lovely is the correct word, is it? But uh, just gorgeous sort of like hand-drawn artwork, which I'm a massive fan of. <sighs> so, without any further ado, let's get this beer opened and see what we get. And as I said, everything and everyone involved in this beer will be in the description down below. And that is pouring really, really nicely, isn't it? Uh, love a good Imperial Stout. Obviously, it wasn't there at Dark City this year. I've never been to Dark City because I was at the, the uh, commentary piss up with Dean and Harry. But uh, yeah, beer in the glass then. Uh, looks pretty much jet black to me, in this light anyway, with two fingers worth of a really intense sort of like dark cafe, cafe? Coffee head. Stomach's rumbling, no reason. But uh, yeah, doesn't that look fantastic? So. Without any further ado, he says, like, nearly six minutes in, or even more, I can't remember. Let's give it a sniff. You definitely get that sour cherry in there. Lovely big malt build. You get a little bit of the cacao. That tonka bean has a really distinct aroma. I can't really put my finger on what a tonka bean smells like, but the beers I've had, they've got that familiar aroma in there. But yeah, it's got that sort of, like, muskiness there. Very subtle savoury edge. Be yeah, a little bit of chocolate. It's chewy, it smells chewy. It's like chewy toffee as well. Anyway, smells friggin' gorgeous. Let's give it a taste. Cheers. Smooth as silk. It's not the heaviest body I've had from uh, an Imperial Stout for this ABV, but that's not thin by any stretch. ABV is masked tremendously. Uh, the sour cherry's there, but it's not too in your face. It's rounded off nicely with the cacao in there. Yeah, very cakey, deserty. Almost like a Black Forest Gatto. Hmm. Even getting a bit of a um, tiramisu vibe about it, which oh, tiramisu, I've not had that for too long. I need to have some tiramisu soon. I might make some this weekend. I don't know. But yeah, let's see what else we've got on there. Uh, Muscovado sugar, you do get that a little bit. It's not too in your face. I know it's cheating reading uh, the ingredients. But yeah, the tonka beans. Uh, again, it's got that distinct sort of, it's a bit more in the aftertaste as well. Very reminiscent of the flavours you get in um, that Brew York beer. Can't remember what it's called, but that was phenomenal. I think I had the Imperial version as well, which just took it to another level. Yeah, see, going into this, I was like, I hope the cherry's not too much, because you do sometimes get these cherry flavours in Imperial Stouts. And that's usually down to the... I've noticed this camera's really weirdly angled. Get that. There we go. Um, sometimes when you get these cherry counters, it's like the, the, the remnants of the yeast strain that's been used. So it's like a yeasty cherry character. This is like putting a spoon in some sour cherries. Because you get that flavour. It's not too intense. Which is nothing like putting it in the puree because you would get a big, big mouthful. It's it's rested really nicely and blends beautifully with the other flavours. And it's just, it's there though. You know, it's not like faded in the background. It's not fighting for your attention or getting lost in other flavours. It's actually really nicely balanced. So, um, yeah, I think this is an absolutely wonderful beer. Picks up from Northern Beer Temple. The links are down below. Got a big taste of the cherry there. 
And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a nine out of ten for me. Maybe a little bit more body that would push it up to a ten. But uh, wonderful stuff again from the patrons project. So if you've tried it, let me know your thoughts, opinions down below. Check out everyone involved. If any of my friends or fellow YouTubers have reviewed it, then their links down below. And uh, yeah, lovely, lovely stuff indeed. Check out another beer temple. Check out everyone else involved. And uh, hopefully you'll join me next time for another beer review. Cheers, guys. Thank mm -hmm. you.